I'm Eric Rubel with Nissan Product Communications, and today we're taking an up-close look at Nissan's Gen 3 Formula E race car. I'm joined by Lawrence Wilshire, who's been working with Nissan's motorsport team since 2008. So let's start with the basics. What's different about the Gen 3 car compared to previous generation vehicles? Well, this is the fastest, lightest, most advanced electric racing car that there's ever been, really. But compared to Gen 2, this car has 350 kilowatts of power compared to only 250 kilowatts of power in the previous generation. Uh, it's only 840 kilograms compared to, compared to 900 kilograms previously. And it will do a top speed of 200 miles an hour compared to about 180 miles an hour last time. So lighter, faster, generally better. Yeah, sounds like it. So talking about powertrain, this is our most advanced powertrain in a Formula E vehicle ever. Tell me a little bit about the motors. What's powering the vehicle? So in the rear, we have a 350 kilowatt uh, power motor that drives the rear wheels. That's designed, developed by uh, Nissan, along with the inverter and all the systems that uh, that run the car and the transmission. The maximum 350 kilowatts of power from the back, but also there is a motor in the front that regenerates electricity, as does the, the motor in the rear. Gotcha. So talking about efficiency, that's a huge deal here, as it is for a passenger EV vehicle, right? So tell me about range and what that kind of looks like on the track. Efficiency is key in Formula E because actually the motor, the power of the motor is limited for all of the teams at 350 kilowatts. And we only have a set amount of power to use, which is a 40 kilowatt hour battery. So we're limited on power and limited on the amount of energy we have. So the more efficient we can be, the more power we can use out, out on the track. Nissan is the only mass market manufacturer participating in Formula E and the only Japanese manufacturer in Formula E. Uh, and one of the big benefits of this is that we are able to take technologies that we develop here and use them in our passenger vehicles. So can you tell me a little bit about how that works and a few examples? Yeah, well, in fact, when we first started racing, it was a, Nissan's road car technology and experience in electric vehicles going back to 1947, believe it or not, when they made their first electric car. Uh, that All of that knowledge helped the race team when we started out to develop the racing car. But now we've been in the racing series for sort of six years. That knowledge is, is going back the other way. And in fact, we have um, engineers from the Nissan road car side of the business working with the race team and vice versa to allow that energy to, to flow both ways. So, Lawrence, one thing that makes Formula E unique is that there's no remote data transmission from the vehicle to the pit, to the engineers. So the driver is responsible for relaying all that information back themselves. It's a pretty complicated job. Tell me about the equipment they have that helps them do that. Yeah, so what I have here is the Generation 2 steering wheel that they used in the previous car, but it's very similar to what they use now. And as you can see, there's a mass of buttons and switches and things that they have at their disposal here to, to make the car behave differently in different power modes. So they have regeneration buttons here, lift and coast buttons, uh, different software modes that they can apply. And there's about 500 different options that they can use here, and all these things that they have to learn. But they also have to look at this tiny little screen here and relay the data that it says on there back to their engineer. So the engineer can then tell them what software mode and what changes to make. So there'll be things like how much battery charge is left, what temperature, that sort of thing. Um, and when they're doing that, not only do they have to learn all these different switches and work out what does what, they also have to speak in a secret language because when they talk on the radio, the other teams can hear what they're saying and they don't want the other teams to know what they're saying. So not only does the driver have to be a fast racing driver, a multitasker, they also have to learn a completely secret language as well as they can talk to their engineers. So they've got to be uh, pretty talented intellectual racing drivers. That's a lot more complicated than just setting the cruise control in my car. Yeah, there's definitely no pro pilot on this car. Lawrence, thank you so much for your time and joining me here today. Can't wait for the race. If you want to check out more Nissan Garage exclusives, check out the rest of the videos on our YouTube page.